The new region for Pokémon Scarlet and Violet seems to be based on the Mediterranean, maybe more specifically on places on the Iberian Peninsula like Portugal and Spain. The Mediterranean is characterized by forest, woodlands, scrubs, and grassland habitats. The Iberian Peninsula is also largely mountainous, so maybe we can expect some high elevation and colder regions as are popular in each of the Pokémon generations. This region typically has hot and dry summers with cool rainy winters. And because of this, much of the plant life might be sclerophyllous, meaning that it's covered in a waxy outer layer that helps reduce water loss. One common sclerophyllous plant found in the Iberian Peninsula is the olive, and is already represented by the Pokémon Smolliv. And if you want to check out more about Smolliv ecology, watch this video here. If Pokémon are based on real-life things that are found in this region, looking at the habitat types and the flora and fauna, what other kinds of Pokémon can we expect to come out of Pokémon Scarlet and Pokémon Violet? Starting out, one popular suggestion is that Sprigatito represents the Iberian Lynx or Lynx Pardinus. The Iberian Lynx is a medium-sized wildcat that can weigh up to 35 pounds and preys on small vertebrates such as rodents or small birds. It's currently listed as endangered by the IUCN or the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Their listing is due to a combination of loss of habitat, road accidents, and illegal hunting or poaching. Since starter Pokémon are rarely found in the wild, it would make sense that Sprigatito is representing another Pokémon that is endangered or not very often found in the wild. The next Pokémon I would like to see is something based off of wall lizards or members of the Podarkus genus. Wall lizards are common reptiles found throughout Europe, particularly in the Mediterranean. They are generalists eating a wide variety of invertebrates, with some also eating some small vertebrates as well as plant matter. They are pretty common sites throughout the Mediterranean and have adapted quite well to urban settings. Maybe we can see some kind of reptile Pokémon that's either part steel or part poison, which are usually highly associated with urban environments in the Pokémon games. Spain is also home to a breeding colony of greater flamingos. Given that flamingos are such an iconic bird, I think that this generation has a high chance of releasing our first flamingo Pokémon. Maybe it'll be a flying water type since flamingos forage for small invertebrates in water, or maybe they can make some kind of play on words since Flame Ingo is sitting right in front of us and hasn't been used yet. I would love to see a bird Pokemon that's like Fire Water or Fire Flying and it's just a on fire flamingo instead of being pink. They could even make it where the things it eats helps fuel its fire type because in real life pink flamingos get their coloration from the invertebrates that they eat. I'm just really into Flame Ingo being a Pokémon, so now at this point if they don't have it I think I'm going to be a little disappointed. So here's to hoping for Flame Ingo. Next up is the common chameleon, Chameleo Chameleon, and is the only chameleon species to be found in Europe. Obviously we already have a chameleon species in Kecleon, but maybe we can get some sweet regional variant or a brand new chameleon Pokémon altogether. We can't have enough reptile Pokémon, right? The Iberian Peninsula, as well as much of Europe, is home to the magnificent Hoopo bird, which is known for its fluty call and its glorious plumage. Hoopos use their long and slender bill to probe the ground looking for grubs and other insects, and they also nest in tree cavities. Maybe we can get a ground flying type that uses ground type attacks to help forage for food, since the Hoopo uses its beak to forage in the ground for food. Another great bird that is found in this region is the Bee Eater, which migrates from Africa. This is another cavity nester, except they prefer to nest in the sides of cliffs. But they do in fact eat bees. One study suggested that even upwards of 91% of their diet is made up of strictly bees. Maybe we can get some kind of Route 1 flying type that is said to specialize on Combi, since Combi has already been revealed in the Scarlet and Violet trailer. I think this would be a great opportunity for Pokémon to expand on their ecological realism and take advantage of a cool animal that exists in real life and put it into Pokémon. The common genet, or Genetta Genetta, is our next target for a new Pokémon species. Genets belong to the carnivore family of Viviridae and are related to things like civets and binturongs. Common genets are nocturnal solitary hunters that are expert climbers and spend a lot of time in their tree looking for prey. 
They are omnivorous, hunting invertebrates and small vertebrates like rodents and small reptiles, but also eat plant matter and fruit. Maybe this will lead to some dark type of mammal Pokemon to reflect its elusive nocturnal behavior. Another mammal I hope to see that's native to the Iberian Peninsula is the Iberian Ibex or Capra pyrenaica. Four subspecies of this animal have been described, but two have gone extinct rather recently. A project to revive one of these subspecies was actually carried out in 2003 by attempting to clone a Pyrenean Ibex. This subspecies was actually unextincted for a short amount of time before the clone died due to physical defects. Maybe we can see a similar plot point in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet by seeing them try to resurrect extinct non-fossil Pokemon, particularly with this generation's emphasis on the past and the future. And finally, I want to take a look at natural fires as an inspiration for a new Pokemon. The hot, dry summers of this region make many of the natural areas prone to fire. But this can actually be a good thing. Some plants found here are even pyrophytes, meaning fire-loving. This means that they have evolved alongside fires and have become dependent on it for reproduction, its use of recycling nutrients, or the removal of dead and competing vegetation. One such pyrophytic plant is the stone pine or Pinus pinea. They have thick bark with a high moisture content to help protect from fires, and their cones only open up to spread their seeds after being exposed to high temperatures. This ensures that when the seeds are released that they fall into open ground and can grow up with low amounts of competition from other plants. I would love to see some kind of fire grass type Pokemon or a Pokemon that maybe transforms after being hit by a fire type attack. Let me know what you guys want to see out of this generation in the comments, or if you're an artist, maybe you can bring some of these ideas to life. Thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel to see more videos on Pokemon biology and ecology.